Hey, what's up? This is Arduino here. Welcome back. A lot of our conversations recently have been around fashion at a conceptual or a genre level. We've looked at a bunch of things from the rise of old money aesthetics to the adoption of working class aesthetics and thought about how to get involved with clothing and fashion in a more conscious way with the aim of spending wisely on clothing that's going to be valuable to you long term, making you happier with your wardrobe and not just feeling like you're always one trendy purchase away from achieving drip. But general vague tips about not following trends or avoiding certain retailers, they're only going to get you so far. So this time I've gathered up some of the stuff that I personally have picked up recently and we'll use that as a bit of a jumping off point to talk about not just the specific things that I've bought because everyone's got different tastes, right? But why I bought those things, the methodology and how you can use that with respect to your own style. What should you actually buy this summer? Let's talk about it. I'm super in favor of developing your own style and using fashion as a way of self-expression, but that doesn't mean we need to avoid trends, rather we can make use of popular things in our own way. It's not an Antoine pickup video without including some acronym, and this time it is the P46DS, which has really been the standout for me. Wider and straight-fitting pants have really taken over as a go-to silhouette now, and these fit into that idea pretty well. They're also a little bit longer than your average acronym pants, so you'll see these draping pretty nicely over most shoes. This allows you to wear some pretty chunky sneakers and still have them feel balanced, which I feel like is a positive as I'd like to try out some more of that stuff. They're also far slouchier, more casual looking than a lot of my pants, particularly with those extra long draw cords, and yet they are still pretty familiar in a lot of ways, made with that same shoulder dry skin fabric that I've got a bunch of pants in by this point. They give you that pure black colour associated with nylon and a slightly more futuristic edge versus natural fabrics, meaning despite the different silhouette, they still fit in pretty easily with my wardrobe. Aesthetically different enough to allow me to enjoy some new looks, but still having those familiar elements so that they are well within my comfort zone. A good thing to look for, therefore, clothing which engages with a wider trend in a way that's true to your personal style first. Are these seasonally appropriate though? Actually, yes, more so than pretty much all of my pants, thanks to these outside and inside leg vents with the tension zip on there to help the material fold nicely outwards, these end up being surprisingly breezy. They're definitely the shoulder dry skin summer pant. A little risque with some visible leg going on there as well. Maybe leave the pink boxes at home for these pants. If you're expecting warmer weather, definitely consider picking things up with summer specifically in mind. I know that sounds really stupid, but trust me, there is a massive difference between sweaty pants and cool, breezy ones. Those kinds of material or feature-based changes are gonna make you feel good about reaching for that thing and feel comfy when you're wearing it. I wanna cover the draw cords quickly. They have these clever little buttonholes on them, so despite looking very carefree and undone, they do actually help hold your pants up. They're kinda useful, but mostly it's about the look and giving these a bit more personality, and I do think that's important. So I'd say another tip is looking for aesthetic details that your other clothing is missing. That doesn't mean that they're not a little bit annoying though. Although the webbing is super lightweight, so you don't really feel them flapping around, the exact opposite of what those Doom Life pants did by putting little metal bits at the end, Bad idea. I've shut them in my car door so many times, going to the bathroom is a bit of a dangly logistical issue. Uh, even just walking around in the wind, these end up flapping around all over the place. Nonetheless, I think they add more than they take away, and given the choice, I wouldn't remove them. And as a wider point, while we're talking pants, if you only really wear slim or skinny stuff, why not consider branching out? Regardless of what kind of thing you like to wear, jeans, work pants, whatever, think about your favorite pair, something that you really, really like. Maybe just try opting for a slightly wider version. Staying true to what you feel comfortable in, but doing it a little bit different will definitely help you try out new stuff rather than dropping everything in favor of whatever's ultra trendy or going for the most extreme version of a trend at once. The next thing is neither the most expensive nor the craziest piece of clothing, but it is possibly the coolest thing that I've picked up this year. One of my best purchases for sure, and it is this camp collar embroidered shirt from Needles. Like with the P46, this has quite a lot of elements which are popular right now. It's got that slightly cropped boxy fit, it's got the camp collar, it's got the short sleeves, it's got this sort of mesh embroidery kind of deal going on, but still has those other parts which apply more to my style, being all black, of course, and being nylon rather than a sort of crocheted cotton or a natural material. Those characteristics helped me feel immediately comfortable in this, despite the texture and the translucency making a little bit of a statement. It's also a new type of garment for me in that I only have one other short sleeve shirt and that one looks pretty different to this. But when a statement piece still has that tie to clothing
clothing you typically wear, the thing that makes it unusual and different can feel more empowering than it does intimidating. And for that reason, I'd encourage you not to feel that if you're trying out a new garment or something you wouldn't ordinarily wear, that you would have to go for the most basic or the plain version first to kind of ease yourself into it. You can go for something a little bit more unusual like this if it still has that thing that grounds it for you. Because yeah, honestly, despite this being kind of unusual, I find it really easy and really fun to wear. You don't even need to stick to a particular genre or things that you see others wearing. I mean, this looks so different to everything else that I'd normally wear, but still kind of fits in. It's not a performance item of clothing, but it's still got two nice big handy pockets and a nice ventilated open structure. It is fun to dress with a particular genre or aesthetic in mind, but sometimes clothes that look good together is really all you need, and those things can reflect your taste better than adopting a genre uniform. To drive that home, I wore this out for a day when I was in Anaheim last month, and multiple people, strangers, were like, hey, nice shirt, which basically never happens, and it made me feel pretty good about wearing this. And also from being out there, I can confirm it is mega summer appropriate, not only from a comfort perspective, but being able to bring a summary look to an outfit very effectively, surprisingly rare with something all black. Even though the differentiators, the material and the colour, kind of make this less on trend than some of its equivalents, it's those differentiators that make me like this more and more likely to wear it. And they're exactly what will keep me wearing something like this long term versus those other options. So don't be afraid to pick something less talked about if you think it's more authentically you. Dressing with respect to your interests is a great way to inject the personal into personal style. Now, I don't really keep my gamer state as much of a secret, but let's face it, most to gaming clothing is not very good. That's a topic for another video, but here is an example of some actually interesting gaming clothing. Hideo Kojima, Jean-Francois Ray with a pair of collaborative sunglasses. I reached out to them a while ago and they were able to send out possibly the coolest pair, the HKXJF01. Complete with branded box, case, and cleaning cloth, these are undoubtedly straight from the game, yet at the same time, apart from the little detail on one lens, don't really come across as a gaming product, except to the few people in the know. They look and feel like a fashion item first, and indeed, them being made in France by a more luxurious independent brand helps ensure that. I like the look of them, but I like just as much how these have a direct link to a game I enjoyed and have design input from someone who I think makes some cool stuff and certainly isn't afraid to wear cool jackets and sneakers. And okay, maybe cool man who make a video game is a little bit of a superficial link to a product, but it does give me a little bit of a more emotional response to these than I would do a random pair of Luxottica sunglasses that I just bought in a shop. And that ultimately is just gonna make me a little bit more excited to put these on and because they're a bit weird as well, I like weird stuff. The other exciting thing is these have transforming action. I don't really know if buy stuff that transforms really constitutes good advice, but I certainly always enjoy doing stuff like this. I always like fun experimental stuff and fashion which has this sort of tactile quality about it, and any clothing which you want to engage with physically is ultimately clothing that you want to wear. I do think having interests past fashion is essential for overall well-being, and having your interests influence each other is a pretty cool way of doing things. Right now, gaming and Lego definitely my go-to relaxation, de-stress type hobbies, so obviously, like everyone else, I've been playing Tears of the Kingdom, which I have really enjoyed. Uh, I also picked up Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I used to play the Dynasty Warriors games when I was a kid, and it's kind of fun to go back to that slightly mindless gameplay, and you're just getting a little bit of a slice of extra Zelda story and stuff as well, um, so that's kind of cool, and you just get to play a Zelda killing like a thousand Bokoblins, which is always fun. I loved Into the Breach, and Switch is the perfect format for it as well. It has some extra content versus the PC version, which is nice. It's this turn-based strategy type game which is really focused on movement, so there's loads of cool little combos you can do. You get to feel like you've got an enormous brain setting up some crazy Rube Goldberg machine of different attacks and stuff to defend your territory. And let's be honest, I'll basically play anything with roguelike elements. Just finished the UCS X-Wing back there as well, the included display stand makes it look really nice. It is a shame LEGO is so expensive, but I would definitely encourage you to try one of the smaller sets if you like the idea of doing something mindful and low stress to just kind of vibe to. There are loads of adult appropriate sets these days, Lego kind of realised that grown-ups with some disposable income are a very lucrative market. And a similar hobby, I have some boxed up Gunpla still that I really need to get to building. I also got this W. David Marks book, Status and Culture. I'm only a chapter in, but I think the content here is going to be super relevant for some upcoming and past topics, so expect me to be referencing this at some point. All those things are important to me, and it was great hearing from you all recently on the community tab. I asked you what kind of music or movies or TV or whatever you're enjoying, and we got loads of great suggestions to check out from that, so thanks very much. 
Let me know if you like talking about this stuff or if you'd rather we just stick to clothing only. Following on from that, if you're terminally online like me, I do prescribe you with touch and grass occasionally because sometimes you just got to get out there to cop some cool stuff. UK brand Rayburn had a sample sale at their design studio, so I decided to go along and they had some crazy one-offs and pieces from their archives, which I'd never seen before. They had prototypes, limited editions, all stuff like that. And I ended up picking up this air brake jacket, which is one of 50 and comes adorned in this cool parachute-like material, which gives the end jacket somewhere between 3D camo and high-vis vibes. I mean, do you want to be seen or don't you? With this one, I just really like that it's something most people won't have seen before, and it's certainly pretty different for me, but still has those clear military references, what with the coloring and the use of material. Can also be toned down a bit, I think, by wearing this as a mid-layer, so you just get a flash of that great yellow color. I'm not gonna wear this every day, of course, but it does make a really cool statement piece. I also picked up, just nestled behind here, this 1979 Chinese ammo bag from the same place. Made of this super tough cotton duck, and it's another great example of items that are unique and come with a little bit of personality. In fact, at this sample sale, they just had loads of stuff which doesn't really have that much presence or visibility online. And getting that in-person experience really shows you what things look and feel like up close in a way that product pictures just can't really do. Like there were quite a few jackets that I definitely would have just passed through if I was looking at them online, but in person you really get a sense of that great texture in the material and that garment dyed finish. And where else are you gonna try 20 one-of-a-kind jackets? Chris himself was there as well, so very much a rare chance to actually speak to the person who uh, had a pretty big hand in designing the stuff that you're checking out and potentially buying. And a few people were there who recognized me as well, so shout out to you. And now these items are representative of that cool little experience that I had. So even if I don't end up wearing this stuff that much, they still are gonna have some value to me for that reason. So shopping one-offs or community events is definitely worth a go, and who knows, maybe I'll end up making some fashion friends. Although there are other things that I'd love to mention, like these Converse and a Cold Wall Aeon Active CX, a new dyed version which changes the yellow at the front to this nice cool turquoise, or these very cool Adidas and Hamkus shorts, which really did a great job of keeping that Hamkus identity in a brand new sportswear package and creating something pretty cool and I think fairly wearable, definitely a high point for the brand. Even some other acronym stuff like this t-shirt made of a really nice soft feeling cotton or this little 3A2 with a surprisingly vintage look for an acronym product, both of which I picked up pretty cheaply on marketplaces. So there's another great tip, don't be afraid to shop secondhand. The J68 GT based on the Shop Perfecto and boasting numerous ways of wearing this thing so you feel like you can get a lot of use out of it. At least that's what I say to myself to pretend like buying another Gore-Tex jacket was actually a smart idea. It wasn't. Memes aside, I do actually really like this, just gonna have to wait for it to get a bit colder again. But it's actually a t-shirt purchase that I feel like is more significant in a weird way. Because I got this Supreme t-shirt of all things, an undercover collab a few months back, I really like the Tekken and Yoji one, which in a pure coincidence, I am actually wearing at the moment. I kind of like that Supreme isn't really a hyped brand anymore. It makes me feel a little bit less cringe about buying these kinds of graphics that I like. I went for this because I found it quite funny how I feel like it has multiple layers of meaning. Like if you're not really interested in fashion, it's just a t-shirt that says SUP on it, which I think is kind of funny and stupid. If you know Supreme, obviously you probably recognize the font and think, oh, it's a Supreme t-shirt. If you're a little bit more of a fashion connoisseur, then the underlined you will make you think, oh yeah, undercover. I get it, yeah, clever. But the background is an enlargement of a famous painting called The Fallen Angel by Alexander Cabanel. I'm not a huge art snob, but it is a painting that I particularly like, and it also reminds me of Paradise Lost, which kind of covers the same topic, which I read a very long time ago. Look, at the end of the day, it's just a graphic tee. It's not that special, but I feel like I see something in this that other people don't, and sometimes that's all the justification you need to enjoy something, whether it is some conscious, weird process like the one that I've just described, or whether it is something that you can't quite articulate, but just something inside is kind of making you feel like, yeah, that's kind of cool. Intuition, instinct, whatever you want to call it, that can just lead you to having a strange resonance with something in particular. You don't really need to explain yourself in cases like that if you really like something. You can just enjoy it because you like it and that's fine too. But I actually have a ton more stuff to show in case you're wondering what those crazy looking shoes are in the background. But I wanna do some more stuff really focusing on smaller and independent brands as a bit of a follow up to a video that we did earlier this year. I'm looking forward to that one, so keep a lookout for it and would love to hear what you think about this video. I tried to make it a little bit of a different format to the standard pickup video. Um, if you feel like that worked for you, if you thought it was a bit more interesting, then would definitely like to hear your thoughts on it. But. That's all from me, so thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. It is massively appreciated. And again, would love to hear your thoughts on any of the individual things or at a more conceptual level, if there's stuff that you have really enjoyed that you've picked up recently, I wanna hear what you have to say. And with that, 
I'm out. I'll catch you soon.